Hi guys, please bear with me. I'm having some technicals at the moment. I can't seem to go live onto my existing chat that I posted. So um, I'm doing my best, all right? Just bear with me a minute. Okay, we've got some people watching now. Great, brilliant. <laughs> I think we're getting there. Meanwhile, my smoker's going out. Good. Hello from Poland. Hello, everybody. Okay, awesome. So, I'm sorry about all this. I should have started five, ten minutes ago. Welcome to my cell building yard. Okay. So, the whole idea today is I'm going to make this cell builder hopelessly queenless. I hope you can all hear me well enough. Let me know if you get any issues, I'll do what I can, all right? I'm sorry, uh, I'll just repeat this again. I'm sorry I had an issue before on the link I put up. I couldn't log on to the link for some reason. Um, but I've got quite a few people now have found me on my normal channel. So um, I hope that works for you, okay? Anyway, as I said, the whole idea is I've got a lovely strong colony here that, I'm, that is my cell builder. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this colony hopelessly queenless, okay? And I'm going to make it hopelessly queenless so I can raise cells from it this evening. Yeah, hi Colin, at least you found me all right, good. Okay, so let's just go through some of the components a bit here. Make sure this is all so you can see everything. I'm just going to tilt this a little bit. Okay, so this is an already strong colony with 10 frames. These are all day dance hives. 10 frames of bees and brood in the bottom, strong colony already running well this spring, okay? So I could have made up the cell builder about a week or two ago because we've got everything going now and um, it's a really strong spring at last. But I wanted to wait a little bit longer because my finishes weren't up to par. So this is a normal, normal box of bees and brood doing what they do. To that, I added a honey super. This is a honey super. To those of you who don't know what a honey super is, it's an extra box we put on top with 10 half size frames. So 10 half size frames that allow the bees inside to put honey in there so they don't clog up the brood nest and start swarming. Okay. On top is another super. Okay. Which is because the spring is so strong, there's so much honey coming in and there's such a prolific colony, lots of bees coming and going. I wanted to give this, uh, this colony plenty of room. So there's two supers, one, two. And in the middle is the magic, okay. In the middle is a box with 10 frames of brood that I added over a week ago, about nine days ago. So the whole idea is I've made this box even stronger. But the magic is, here is a queen excluder, okay? And what a queen excluder does, it stops the queen who's in there, laying away, laying up in here. So there's no eggs in this super. There's no new eggs been laid in this brood box and there's no eggs in this super either. So there's no, what I mean is there's no larvae, okay? There's no way the queen can make any larvae. You see there's an awful lot of bees in this colony already and the passage of bees is huge. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove these two supers for the moment and they're both above an excluder so the queen will always be underneath still. I'm gonna take off that top box and put it to one side because this is what I'm gonna to use to raise queens with later because this will be my basis that I put my grass into, okay? Now, afterwards, when I've taken the top box off and put it to one side, I then move this one away, okay? This will go probably to here where I'm talking from now or it could go the other side, or it could go in front, or it could go behind. It doesn't matter where it goes from, okay? But the whole idea is you move the queen away. And what happens when you do that? It's what we call an artificial swarm. It's a technique within a technique. But by moving the queen away, it makes this, the rest of the equipment, hopelessly queenless, okay? So, there's one piece of equipment that I'm actually short of that I'll have to grab off another hive in a moment. I realize I'm short of a base. But when I start, there'll be bees flying everywhere. And when I've put this box here back in its place on a new base in exactly the same place, this box becomes the business, okay? This box is where it's all happening because all the bees that are foraging 
are going to come back to this box because it's the only place they know. The, the, the box with the queen will lose a lot of its forager bees. And that will be here. And that will lose a lot of its bees because it will, they'll all fly back to the only place they know. So it becomes incredibly more strong. So overwhelmingly strong with bees and food coming in the door and protein and pollen and everything it needs in this flow. But there's no queen and there's no eggs. So the queen absence means that any larvae I do put in there, the bees will jump on them. But there's a little trick we do to make this even stronger. We wait a little while. We wait for about four or five hours while they're hopelessly queenless because the nurse bees then get even more full of raw jelly because they're not feeding any larvae. At the moment, the nurse bees here are feeding larvae in there. And I'm going to take most of those out and put them into this box. And then they'll all be waiting to feed larvae, but they can't because there's nothing to feed. And there'll be this pressure on that they know the queen's gone and there's no cells and no larvae. And they all start flying around the apiary like this. And they're all annoyed. They're a little bit aggressive at the start. Then they soon calm down because there's no point in being aggressive. They have nothing to defend. You've taken their brood away. And all you leave is this box in its place. Okay, so let's make a start. I'm going to just put my gloves on because I don't want to get stung. I'm not a hero. And Ben, if you're watching in Australia, you might recognize these gloves. <laughs> Wow, 88 of you lovely people. I didn't say welcome to you all, by the way. We've got a gorgeous sunny day here in Corsel in France. Fantastic weather. I thought it'd be a bit of fun to go live. If you missed it before, the reason why I was starting late was because um, I had a technical issue where I couldn't seem to log on to the link I'd put up regarding the, uh, the going live. So, off we go. I'm going to be moving the camera a little bit as we do this because obviously I need to make sure you see what goes on. First of all, as I said, I've got to take the supers off and I've got to take off all, I've got to dissemble the whole lot. So I'll just tilt this a little bit for you so you can see and hear me. I hope you can hear me well. So there's going to be an awful lot of bees starting to fly around the minute I get into this. This will be my feeder, my feeder hole for after. But because I want to give them extra protein, because the flow's nearly over, I'm giving them some pollen sub in patties and that will go on top of the bees right where the queen is. Sorry, right where, <laughs> don't want the queen there, right where the, um, the pollen frames will be, but it'll augment what's there. absolutely full of bees. So I'm going to leave this closed for now. I don't need to disturb this. Leave that cover on for now. Because it's going to be chaotic. A lot of honey in this super. This is where you need a... Woo! <laughs> it's going to be a good harvest from these bees. Okay. That first one's off. Here's the business. Here's what I need to make my queen cells from mostly hatched brood being backfilled with nectar as you can see and we'll go through this after and remove the queen cells because you can't have a cell in a cell builder. Mike if you're watching, hi. So we're going to remove this and put this to one side for the moment. It can go anywhere but I'm probably going to put it just on the floor for now on this other upturned roof or maybe I'll put it here depends on the weight and it weighs an absolute ton because it's full of bees and nectar and there's a flow running. Oh, I've got two handles on this luckily. Let's just try and get it removed. Woo! Okay, let's put this here. So you can see there's a big flow running. A lot of nectar. We've got some drones trapped above this queen excluder which is there. Second super off which is nearly full. There's the queen excluder. I'll leave that in place for now. Okay. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these bees that are in the supers as well because I'm going to shake a lot of them out and those supers will go on another colony. I don't need them anymore. If I find one that is pretty empty or there's some room 
minute, I might leave it on just to give room, okay? So here you see the confusion starting now. A little bit of smoke. Okay, I'm just gonna have to grab a base, okay? Two seconds. Now this is one of the Nico bases we use. Okay? Yes, it's a bit catty, I'm afraid. <laughs> but like everything else, this is beekeeping. So I could put this hive onto this base, but the bees wouldn't probably go to here because they don't know any different. They only know where they're flying back to right now. But I'm going to take, actually we don't need that base, I'm going to take this, this I do, I need, I'm going to slide this over. Um, I'll go this way because then you can see. I'm going to move this over this way and put the new base back in its place. Here we go. I'm just doing this so that you can see the most practical. And this is the box with no larvae in, okay? This is just hatching brood still. I could have waited another day, but as you see the weather, I was praying that this hive didn't swarm. I've been through it once, taken out queen cells, but you just never know with bees. So on goes this box, which is was above the queen excluder. So there's no larvae in this. That now becomes the colony. So I've swarmed this queen. I've taken her away from this colony. It's no longer connected to this one. And I'm going to spin this around now. Because at the moment the bees are thinking, well, actually, which one do we go back to? Spin this around. I'm going to move this down a little bit more. There we go. I'd like to give a good two to see. They're all funneling in again now, okay? The queen is under the queen excluder. Everything is good. So we've still got where I set the box here. And if you can read that, 10 broods. This is the brood that we went through. There's the two supers still waiting to have bees shaken out of, which they will do in a minute. But any fire flying bees, in these supers that are here, those supers there, any flying bees, they may well go back to the front, you see? So, as I said before, we can't have a cell in a cell build, so how do we get rid of those? We have to check every one. So here we go. And we're probably gonna find a few cells. And the best way to check them is shake the bees off. Full of nectar as well. Nothing there, one cup there, nothing in that cup. This takes about 10 minutes to check the whole thing, but you cannot have any cells in your builder. Otherwise, cells equals a hatched virgin too quickly, and then it will stop you producing any of your cells. We've actually got a fair bit of brood here still, but it doesn't make any difference because that will hatch out in the next two or three days. See how it's hatching here in a line? Everything from there is hatched. You can see that the arc of hatching where the queen laid before and then it, hatch, it all hatches out in that way. No cells. empty cup there. To show you this, look how they backfilled everything with nectar. You can see our flow is really strong. Incidentally, if you want to leave comments on this live feed, I'm recording it and I will get um, to get back to answering to you, well, within a few days, hopefully. <laughs> it's just so busy right now. Look at this, cells, here we are. That's what I wanted to see. There's your cells in your cell builder, okay? We've elevated this brood above the brood box that was here. And as we did that, the queen pheromone was reduced, but the hive was congested. It's the recipe for swarming. And what happens? Queen cells. There's less pheromone distributed above the excluder. That's why you can use a queen right colony that has an excluder for finisher, because the bees don't see their swarm cells. They just see them as cells to finish above the excluder. So we'll remove these. I could. I, 
there'll be people saying, why don't I keep this? But it's a waste of time because I can make far better cells than these ones. This is the whole idea of doing this process, okay? So remove those. We've got to shake every frame off. This cell build is actually going to be stronger tomorrow, but it's fine to use today because the weather's perfect. There's a huge amount of feed. There's no stress on the colony. If I had a penny for every time I've made a cell builder, I'd be a rich man. <laughs> Hundreds of times now. That frame I'm going to probably take out because it's virtually all honey. There's a little bit of brood here, as you can see, but I put that in another colony. But it's really warm this afternoon, so I'm not worried about the brood getting damaged. I just want to find two frames that I can take out, okay? Because, um, two frames that can come out because I need a space for my pollen frame and for my, uh, my cells that are going after, my grafts. Those two can come out. Those frames will go into another colony after, or maybe another frame. But those are the two I've found at the moment that have the less brood on. Shake the bees off. Quite a bit of drone here, but they'll be free now to go off and do what they want to do because they were above the excluded before. But they'll be hatching out soon as well, but they don't do anything apart from consume. Okay, so we found our queen cells. So, let's put this back together tidily. See, we're getting quite a few bees amassing on the front. Okay, and I like to leave some brood next to where the cells are going to go. That doesn't really make much difference, that. So we'll leave two spaces in the middle. And what I do is, I don't know if you can see, but I've got castellations there. You can probably hear them, but I've got none here. So when I put my, my frames in to graft with, when I put this grafting frame in, okay, I push the other frames around it. Well, I'm going to talk to you a bit about that after. I've got some questions um, I've written down that people ask me regularly. That I'm going to go through, okay? Let's just reassemble this side. So, that's good. A lot of bees flying, a lot of happy bees, not a problem. So then, I could technically use that as a cell builder right now, but it's no way as powerful as I want it to be because a lot of the bees haven't flown back from the first box, from the, where the queen is, and there's still a lot of bees in these supers. So how am I gonna sort that out? How am I gonna get extra bees in this colony that are without a queen and without larvae? We use a shaker box, okay? This is a shaker box. It is a queen, a, a, a screen bottom box. It's a normal super with a queen excluder screwed to the bottom. And around the top, you've seen this in my video, the cell builder explained, is duct tape. I've just spent a fortune on duct tape this morning. I had to buy a whole new roll. <laughs> no, seriously, bees don't like it. I don't know why, it's probably the texture or the smell. But when I shake bees into this box, they can only go one way and they go through this into the brew, but they leave the queen above, we hope. Let's put this on top and start shaking some bees. So where are the bees going to come from? They're going to come from the um, supers and they're also going to come from the brood box that's packed full of bees as well because that's where most of the nurse bees have been because the bees knew that up top it was just, it was uh, capped brood. So underneath is where a lot of the, the nurse bees will be and we don't need them in here now because the queen is going to have a period of convalescence if you like. She's been moved away and she's not got many forages and because she's not got many forages there will be no need for her to be fed so much. So she'll slow down. Okay, let's shake some bees out into here. I have my queen clip ready, full of nectar. This actually <laughs> is actually a great pollen frame. So I'm gonna keep this to put in to my uh, <laughs> cell builder. But I'll have to watch it carefully for, um, for cells, because if there's larvae in there, which I can see there is, Okay, there's a lot of pollen on that frame, but more this side. I might find a better one yet. 
But if, if I can put that in, that's one pollen frame I've found already. So I take out a lot of these nurse bees, shake them through an excluder, and I leave about three or four frames of brood in the box to just keep the queen going. So we've got to keep an eye out because the queen can run a bit sometimes. It depends what mood she's in. But as I said, because there's so much nectar flowing right now, it actually slows the bees down when you shake the frame out. We might not even see the queen. And that's the worrying thing. I prefer to see the queen. Look at these frames of bees and brood. You see the confusion we're getting now. Another brilliant pollen frame. Look, we're almost getting pollen bound here. This is why these colonies get so strong this time of year in Brittany. bees are on everything. You can see the confusion now. I don't want to leave too much smoke but it just gets the queen down if she's thinking of climbing it. Oh, is that her? No, that's a, that's a belly of a drone. Okay, she's not in there yet. The thing with cell building is you have to go by your gut instinct and if you can't see the queen you just have to go with the fact that you know she can't be in the box because you've done everything else you can. That's why one of the reasons why I remove my cells after 20, well, 12 to 24 hours because I know that if there was a queen or another virgin queen got in and stopped the cells being made she, um, what would happen is the cells would be destroyed, but I've only lost one day of production. So I just go through, I check all the whole colony back for this queen excluder, and then, well, I haven't found the queen yet. Let's see if we can find her. I don't want to shake too much more out that I can maybe get one more frame out. Trouble is all these bees are covered in swimming in nectar, so it's not the best scenario. Sorry guys, I don't know what happened there. Okay, I hope you're still there. And what I've been doing, if you if you did just if I did disconnect for a moment, I'm still getting the uh, bees down through this excluder. I can't find the queen yet. I don't think she's in this box. So she's probably still on the hive on the wall somewhere. And that does happen quite often. You just have to go with your gut feeling. I'm fairly happy that this is a strong colony with no problems. So I'm pretty sure the queen is still in the other side. Because I saw queen cells in the top box when I was going through it, I'm happy that there was no queen up there laying eggs and larvae. Because they would not have made cells otherwise. Okay. Let's see if I can see the queen here on this our last two frames. That's a frame of brood, I doubt she'll be on that. Let's have a look at these first two frames here. Just to see if I can see her. That is an even better pollen frame. That's what I want next to my larvae. And if you can see that wonderful pollen in there. So I'm gonna steal this from the original colony. They won't need it anyway at the moment. And I'll be able to use that to feed my larvae that I put in. Excellent. So, let's put that there for the moment. You can see, I'll take the camera off in a minute and show you the front, but 
This is what you get when you get a good cell builder. Proliferating bees, bees everywhere. I'm going to resemble this. I just have to assume the queen's in here. I have no choice. This happens sometimes. You don't always find her. So. That's the spare pollen frame, obviously. Okay, one of these can go in here, back into there. Good. So, we've shaken everything we need to out of this. This box can now be closed back up. I'm done with this now. I've carefully shaken these out. There's no queen come through. She must be in the side of the box somewhere in there. You do get a lot of drones in this top shaker box because obviously they can't fit through the excluder either. Okay. You can see we've got a lot of confusion and a lot of bees. That's just what you want to see, okay? So now I'm going to put this excluder back on. Just on here for now I'm going to put this. Um, I know this was already excluded but I'm still going to shake bees through it because I want to be sure you know, things happen when you're doing cell building. I just want to shake some of these bees off these, these uh, frames because there's an awful lot of bees here. Everything goes through the excluder. This will then go on top of another colony. It would be absolutely horrid. Well, not horrendous, but if I found the queen now on these frames, I'd be dead worried. <laughs> but. So this is just adding extra bees, worker bees, to the colony. So there's no robbing going on right now, so I can do this in open air. There's no problem, if you know what I mean. No big deal. So everything's good. If it was late summer, I would really consider not doing this because um, there's bees, too many bees everywhere, you know. But. Okay, that one's done. You can see they're filling this up with nectar pretty well. And you can see that. That's what we, these are our Daydont Batikad, they're called. They're the half size frames we use for our honey. And we do get a bit of burr comb sometimes, but this is actually a bit more than I usually see. So, more bees. Okay. Come on, down you go. It doesn't really matter because I'll just turn this upside down after and tip it all in. So let's now do the second box. Like we saw before, there's loads of, look at this honey, beautiful honey in here. Nice capped honey. Oh, can't even get this frame out. Wait, these are eights by the way, so these are on eights. Nice frames. We call them eights because there's eight frames per, um, if you can see that there, just so I can dip this camera down a bit. There's basically eight frames per box. You have to, you can't just put eight frames in without them being half built already. So what we do is we put, we build them first on tens and when they've been built, we put them in. And what it means is we don't have to use so much resources to get more honey. There's less moving. Okay, this will do. Last one. There's a load more than the next one. All honey, no pollen in there. That's great. That's what I like to see. We'll get these finished on another colony. Good few kilos there. Maybe 15 kilos of honey in that one. That's good. But I may well put a fresh super on or a frame of... I'll put a frame of... A frame of foundation in this colony as well, so the bees have got something to build on. Let's tip the camera back up for you. Okay. So there we go. I hope you can all see that. So now I'll just double check this box that I didn't miss a queen first of all. 
that she was in the top all along and I didn't see her. Because now I, when I tip this out, I'm going to tip it back into the box. I just want to make sure that I haven't missed her, because if I miss her, it's disaster. I won't have any sales tomorrow. Okay, no queen I see at all. Fine. Okay, that is done. So, in goes. My pollen frame. There's bees on, on everything. In goes my pollen frame, this side. No, sorry, that's not my pollen frame, that's a spare frame, I apologise. Here's my pollen frame, this side. Packed full of pollen. Just what I want. Okay. There you go. You can see the confusion we get. I'm going to move the camera a bit now so I can talk to you from in front. Okay, everybody. I've come back up the garden a little bit. And if you guys are still there, can you still see me? I think we can now. Okay, I'm going to have a little chat just further down here where we've got a better signal. Unfortunately, where our cell building is right down over there in that corner where you might just see all those bees circling around. So I'm hopefully going to be able to tell you guys a little bit about what I do and why I do it. Let's see if I can put this down here. Okay. Let's just get things sorted out. Okay, excuse the angle of the camera. We're now back in my, so where I'm cell building is just down the bottom there, but unfortunately it's a bit um, hidden by the trees. And I think that's why we keep losing the signal, you know, but uh, bear with me. So anyway, I can hear bees. We've got bees in front. Thought there was a swarm coming. So um, I've just got a couple of, things um, I want to say about cell building before you guys go that just remember the biggest question I get asked about cell building is um, what do I need to do how do I do it I can't really tell you the best way to to raise queens in your own area because every area as I said before is so different and that's the problem with beekeeping is that um, you need to really experience your own area for a couple of years before you're able to confidently try a couple of queen rearing methods and then because you do that you're then able to um to utilize that experience and make some good queens and and often i do queen rearing and it doesn't work because something like the virgin gets in or you know and and the period we have is so short um that we only have probably four months of the year to do all our to make all our money okay so um, a lot of people ask me about finishers. Why do I use them? Well, that was the reason why I use finishers because that cell builder can be really productive as far as I'm concerned. What some people do is they put their cells in, they leave the cell builder alone for four days, and then on the fifth day when the cells are capped, they take them out or they, let, or they just put the cells above, they reassemble the colony, sorry, and put their cells above their cells are back above the excluded colony. In other words, they reassemble what I started with today. Okay, so, but I don't like to do that because I feel if you have starters, you can utilize more of the same starter to make more cells quickly than you can if you waited the four days. And the second reason is, and I've explained this before, the second reason is, is because that, um, I'm gonna just move this again because I'm right in front of a beehive and they're getting really angry. 
The second reason is that if you do have a rogue virgin getting into your colony and you don't know about it, you're waiting four days for that, for that queen. Sorry, you're waiting four days or five days to see if that um, colony has um, made your cells. And on the fifth day, you uncover that box and find you've got no cells. And you're like, oh my God, you've lost five days. Where if you use finishers, you spread your bets and you're gonna get some cells because not all of your finishers will have one problem. Most of them will all be working, if not all of them. You're spreading the load and you're getting that cell builder being used for the second or third and fourth time consistently. So, and the, okay, the next question is how often can I use my cell builder? If you put your cells in one day, I'll put mine in tonight, okay? I'll put them this evening, I'll leave it. I've just made it hopelessly queen this now. I'll go back in in a minute and show you the picture when the bees have settled a bit and you'll see how many bees there is there. But I've made it hopelessly queenless and I'll put my, my grass in tonight. I will then take them out tomorrow and start just distributing them into finishers, okay? 14 one cell bar per finisher. And that means that every cell in that finisher is catered for because the bees can easily make 14 queen cells in a boom time in the spring summer when there's loads of bees in that colony, okay? It's not a problem. If you leave your cells in that cell builder, it's finished within five days. So I, be, I get four or five loads and the fifth load I leave there to be finished by the colony that is um, holding those cells, okay? So the, four, the first three or four lots, depending on the weather, if I, sometimes I can't get in on the first day, I'll get back in the second day. So I've lost a day of queen ring, but it doesn't really matter because I usually have more cells than I need because they go into my finishers, all right? Right, um, one of the questions is, how many cells, how many grafts can you do? Um, you can do 100 grafts, and in a really good finish, good starter, and in, in really good weather, and it's really well fed, you can do 100 grafts, and you might get 80 to 90 if you take them out the next day. But if you don't take them out the next day, you'll end up with about 40 grafts, okay? The problem is, if you try and get them to feed all the hundred, they'll spend a lot of time over the one, two, three, and four, and fifth day, gradually reducing those number of bit and those number of grafts till about 40 or 50 grafts at the maximum. So it'd be better to have less grafts that are better cells, okay? So you might, you can put a lot in, and because the colony is so overwhelmingly, hopelessly queenless, if you, if you get that colony just right, they'll jump on everything and draw it up. And you go, right, you give them four or five hours, all those cells get started, or the vast majority. And then you move those started cells to finishers. And in the finishers, they look up, see a queen cell, but they don't see it as a queen cell, they see it as a cell, and they just finish it. And they finish it well, because they know it needs raw jelly, and it needs all the goodness they give it. So that's why I use finishes. I can speed my production, I can streamline it, and also I can guarantee I don't lose cells because if one rogue virgin, and I've got loads of colonies around here that are all mating, so there's virgins flying around. If one rogue virgin went in there, it will be the end of that whole cell builder of cells. And I cannot do that. Life, you know, time is too short in the summer. Um, okay. What is the best time to put in cells in your finisher? Right, I like to wait at least four to five hours, not 45, four to five hours after I've made up my cell builder, which I've just done. So I'll put the graphs in tonight. You can leave them for a day. Some people leave them for a day. I think that's personally wasting, um, wasting time. I think you can get them straight in. Some people leave them just two hours. And the, that two hours is enough for the bees to know, or an hour and a half even, even an hour. But within an hour, an hour and a half, two hours, the bees know the queen is missing and they go into emergency mode and they start panicking. And I can already see down there, we'll go back down the raft to just have a quick look, but I can already see that the amount of bees flying around is unbelievable. So I'm gonna go back down in a minute when I finish these next couple of questions and I'll sign off and just show you what it looks like when it's set up. Um, do I feed my cell builder even in a flow? Yes, I do. Because what if it rains? What if the weather goes really crappy? It, it doesn't mean they're gonna take it up. It doesn't mean they're gonna use that pollen sub I put on top, but it means they've got it if they need it. And there's no excuses for the bees not having resources if they need it. You are, you are trying to time everything so that at this time of year, when there's still lots coming in, if it goes cold, if it does 
rain, they can still draw on protein, they can still draw on pollen frames, they can still draw on syrup if they need it. And to stop building burr comb, excuse me, to stop building burr comb, I do put in a frame of um, foundation. I'm going to take one extra frame out of that after because there's such a strong, I didn't realize how strong the flow was so I started shaking those bees out because we've had basically three days of cold weather and the flow's virtually finished but now it's back on again because there's still some residual flowers and it's really nice and warm today. So um, the, uh, um, the, the, the burr comb does get built but if you put in a frame of foundation and what I do with my cell bar is I make my cell bar very thin okay and then what I do is when I put that in when I put my grafts in the colony, I, I move up the other frames either side, okay? And that's another reason why I take my started cells out the starter, because when I put them in the finisher, they might not be quite strong and they're not fed so much, they're gonna draw less burr comb. So you get rid of that problem as well. You help alleviate it. You put it into someone else's issue because you've only got 14 cells. And believe you and me, when you're trying to fish out 40 cells from burr comb that's really bad, it ain't funny because a lot of the cells get broken and you're like, oh my God, this is a nightmare. So, um, Finally, I'll just tell you what I do with my old cell builder. So first of all, you can restock it. If you found the queen, you know where she is, or if I find her when I reassemble the colony and she's healthy, everything's good. If not, I'll, get, I'll leave one cell in there and get that colony going again, or, get it, or I'll give her an inseminated queen, something like that. But I've got, I've got colonies ongoing that I can use to um, requeen a a queenless colony so that's not a problem I, I, I can restock it with the further 10 frames of brood or five frames or six frames if you want if the colony is still enormously strong but don't forget those nurse bees are immediately getting older and that's why I like to cram my starting through as much of the process as possible so they get at least four loads done so I can make 200 300 cells in a week and have them finish the week after as normal but they're all distributed into different colonies and someone else asked me two days ago I think it was can you put more cells to be finished alongside cells that are nearly finished in a finisher? Yes, you can. You just have to make sure that finish is strong, that you make sure that the, the bees are well fed and you've got protein on and, and everything they need because they're only, draw, they're only finishing 14 cells. And if you look at the quality of cells and they finish them well, why not stick another one alongside it, maybe two or three frames up. They'll finish that as well but you need to rotate and bring up some brood from the bottom section of your colony shake the bees off check the queen isn't on it and put that open brood above on the top where they're feeding bees to get the nurse bees up there to feed your cells as well okay so I'm just going to take this off and then we're going to go down and have a look, little look see if I can show you the cell builder um, cell builder finished and ready to take the graft it's going to flip the camera around if I can uh, here we go. Doesn't look like I can do it because I've just gone live. I'll just have to point the camera the other way. So this is my apiary. I've got all sorts of boxes. You can see there are apple trees in flower. Behind that we've got um, hawthorn. Lots of different nukes I'm coming back with. Lots of uh, colonies that, are, that give me brood. And a load more the other side. So you can see these bees now. Look, they're all flying around not knowing what the heck is going on. More colonies here where I filmed my original video. Let me just see if I can show you this. Here we go. Now you see what's happened here? We've got a few bees the other side. Because they're a bit confused, but they will all be on that by tonight, I can tell you. So there you go. That's a hopelessly queenless setup. Ready to take the grass. Look at the beard of bees there, look. I hope you can still see that, you guys. I know the signal gets a bit weak down here, so, but that's where my grafts will go in a couple of hours when I'm ready to put them in. There's my grafting frame. Look how thin it is, you see? I keep that thin so that I can push it up and I don't get so much burr comb. All those forager bees have left this box, okay, and they've come back to this one. This one has minimal nurse bees in now. And this one has everything coming back to this box that it needs. It has, it has millions of, of nurse, thousands of nurse bees. It has more bees than it knows what to do with and it's hopeless.
hopelessly queenless. Look it up, know the terminology. You have to know what hopelessly queenless is. There's no way a bee, sorry, no way a, any bee, a nurse bee can make a new queen with anything from what's inside that colony. Okay, so it's hopelessly queenless. It's not just queenless, it's hopelessly queenless. You must learn the terminology. That's what it's all about. That's what a super strong cell builder is all about at the right time of the year. I'm just lucky today that this didn't go before, but there was no, no cells in the brood box. That's a good honey producer. I might even grow from this queen actually itself because she's a good queen. She didn't swarm and loads and loads of bees, prolific, good pollen frames, fantastic bees. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. It's been great doing this, bit of fun. I'm really sorry about the problems before. Uh, I'll try and explain that basically what I did was I put up a post saying I was gonna go live and did a link and it wouldn't let me click on the link to join you guys. So um, it was all a bit, um, <laughs> a bit of a mismatch and I was panicking because I didn't want to let you good people down. I mean, wherever you are, I hope you're all well. I hope you haven't had too much boredom being stuck inside. For us beekeepers, unfortunately, or fortunately, it's business as usual but I couldn't let these babies sort themselves out because you imagine the mess we'd have here now. So, um, and if you want to send me some messages, if you want to ask me any more questions, I have got a video called The Cell Builder Explained Questions and Answers, which I do explain a lot of things. These are all nukes all ready to go out to apiaries next week. So I do have this video that I have and it will help you understand more. The Cell Builder Explained is a standalone video that will give you exactly what I've done just there. Have a go at making queens, but don't be disappointed. It takes a couple of years to get it refined. You know, you have to really know what you're doing. You have to understand the terminology. You have to be able to manage the bees. You need, you need bees you can manage and you need resources. You cannot make cells without really at least five or six colonies. And I'm gonna, as I said before, I'm gonna do a video in a few weeks time with a small cell builder on a small scale. So I hope you can follow that and that'll be something to look forward to, but I've got to work out the best way to do it to show you guys. So all these now are, yesterday we broke down our mini pluses. Those were the remaining ones at the end that I um, harvested the last queens from. They're all queenless now. Everything here is queenless, or give or take two or three colonies. These are full of bees to go out tomorrow. You see how big the colonies were? These are to go out to apiaries. Everything here is to go out to apiaries for the summer flow. And we're just uh, getting organized to make more splits with all this lot. So it's all go. You can see our hawthorn in flower. It's the end of our spring flow now, really. And uh, there's our farmer just about to sow his maize off ploughing. These are all colonies as well, that are my production colonies and breeder queens. So I have a lot of bees here, so I've got to get these bees out. And they'll be growing them for the summer flow, so it's all go. I hope you enjoyed that and uh, maybe I'll catch you again soon. What I'll try and do tomorrow is do a live when I'm harvesting my started cells and I'll show you, hopefully put them into finishes, but it depends on a lot of things. So it depends if the weather's good enough to do it. Okay, take care. Bye for now. See you again soon. Be well, everybody. Bye.